you've probably heard the word torque at some point. Um, if you're like really into cars, that's like at one spec that people care about is how much torque can the engine put out. And so torque is, for a given scenario, given by this equation. So imagine I have like a lever. So here is the, what we would call the fulcrum of the lever. And then I have this lever sticking out like this. And um, yeah, so this is going to have coordinates P in space. If I decide to apply some kind of force to the end, like this, I'm going to say this point where the force is applied, that's going to have coordinates Q. So PQ. with the little line above it. This is representing the vector in space that has its tail at the point P and the tip of the vector at the point Q. And if I follow this formula, the vector PQ cross with my force vector, that's going to give me what we call a torque. I thought torque should be T instead of M, but I guess I just <laughs> I used what your book used. And the way we interpret this is we say that the magnitude of the torque is going to tell us the tendency of the lever to rotate counterclockwise about the axis whose direction is given by the, that cross product is given by M. So this might make some more sense with this example. So it says a uh, downward force of 100 newtons is applied to the end of a one meter lever, which is attached to an axle. OK, so you can imagine here is the axle. Um, as it is, the axle is parallel to the floor. The lever is perpendicular to the axle. So there's like a 90 degree angle here. Um, and the lever makes a 60 degree angle with the floor. What is the torque? So the torque is, again, this formula where I have PQ vector cross my force vector. And P is the coordinates of this fulcrum. Q is where I apply the force. And then, of course, F is the vector describing the force. So um, to make things easy, I'm just going to tell you that P, and you can just arbitrarily decide this, right, is um, going to be the point 0, 0, 0. So we'll just call P the origin, because why not? In this kind of problem, you can choose where you want your origin to be. And so then for Q, the coordinates of this point Q, the end of the one meter lever, I'm going to go ahead and just say that this has z coordinate 0. Um, for the x coordinate, let's call this the x, <laughs> you know, the x axis right here. For the x coordinate, how do I find the x coordinate of the point Q? The length of the handle times the cosine of 60. Yeah, times cosine of 60. Perfect. So that would be 1 meter times cosine of 60. What is cosine of 60? Mm. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> OK, so that would be 1 half meter for my x coordinate. What about my y coordinate? Yeah, that would be 1 meter 
times uh, sine of 60 degrees. And what is sine of 60 degrees? Yeah, so this would be root 3 over 2 meters for my point Q. Right. So then my vector, this PQ vector, is going to be the vector that is just uh, 1 half, root 3 over 2, 0. OK, what about my force vector? What should be the entries of my force vector here? Perfect. Yeah, zero, because this force vector that I put in red, it's not, it doesn't have any sort of component in the x direction. So I put zero there. And then the whole force is in the downward y direction. And so that's why Abdullah said negative 100 for my y component. And then, of course, this is all happening in the xy plane. And so I can say zero for my z coordinate. So now to find the torque, I just have to take the cross product of this vector with this vector. So PQ hat cross F is going to be the determinant of this matrix, which is not really a matrix because remember i, j, and k are vectors. But uh, this would be 1 half root 3 over 2, 0, and 0 negative 100, 0. So this is going to be i times this determinant minus j times this determinant plus k times this determinant Okay, what is that first determinant? It should be i times what? Zero. zero. Yep. So it would be three, <laughs> root 3 over 2 times 0 minus negative 100 times 0. So this is all 0. This is then minus j times what? Zero. Because that determinant is half times 0 minus 0 times 0. And then plus k times... Um, negative 50, because it's half times negative 100, minus 0 times root 3 over 2. Okay, so the uh, vector that we're calling capital M in my formula is just k times negative 50. And so what are my uh, components here? What are my entries in this vector? Perfect. 0, 0, negative 50. Because remember, k k is the vector that is 0, 0, 1. Okay. So that's my m vector. And the last thing we have to do is take the norm. And the norm of m is... Yeah, 50. It's positive 50 because norms are always positive. But remember, the norm is telling you about the length or the magnitude of the vector. In this case, the whole vector is just in one direction, so it was really easy to see what the magnitude was going to be. Um, so what does that mean? Um, in terms of torque, this magnitude, which was 50, that tells us the tendency of the lever to rotate counterclockwise about the axis whose direction is given by M. And so, um